Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to Most Wanted Topics. I'm your host, Kevin Dennison. Along with me is the Atomic Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, Happy New Year, buddy. Happy New Year. And I tell you what. 2024. 2024 in full effect. And uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, are you enjoying the New Year so far? It's been, I don't know, eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours into the New Year. And are you sticking to your New Year's resolution? I don't have one. You didn't make a New Year's resolution. I didn't know. I don't have one. Who? First of all, I've, you know, I've never actually, you know, stayed to it. So I just figured my New Year's resolution is to not have one. So there you go. I always like, you know, I'm with you. you know, a lot of people, you know, we we make the resolutions and break them. Sometimes we keep them, but I always like to try to set a goal every year and try to hit that goal. Now that's not always a New Year's resolution. I just like to think about it, and there's always the resolutions that I break. I'm not going to lie and say that I'm perfect. But, uh, yeah, that's just kind of funny. You didn't even set a resolution this year. Just no, kinda, oh. I was in bed by, like, 1030 last night. I don't I don't have time for that. You, don't have, to, <laughs> don't have, to, you no. have to get your mandatory eight hours, man. You can't sit till midnight on New Year's Eve. Uh, and I, I, exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I, got, I need my sleep, you know? Cool. I just need the sleep. Well, well, Most Wanted Topics broadcasting to you from beautiful Bloomington, Minnesota, here at our store, Most Wanted Comics. If you haven't been to the store, I invite you to come out and check it out, 9919 Lindell Avenue South in Bloomington. It is a fun store. We are dedicated to having the best selection of back issues and having really cool collectibles. So make sure you come on and check us out sometime. Also, announcement, uh, we got we to gotta bring it up because this Saturday is a big day, Saturday, January 6th. We have the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. That's going to be here signing autographs and meeting people. We invite you all to come out. Come on out and get an autograph, get a selfie with them. It's 20 bucks per item autograph. It doesn't include the item, but we do have some stuff here at the store. If you don't have anything, you can certainly purchase at the store. Uh, 20 bucks for autograph, 20 bucks for a selfie. We have a combo pack. You can get an autograph and a selfie for 30 bucks. So come out and meet Jimmy Hart. He'll be here from 10.30 to 2.30. And uh, we'll get back to that in a, in a little while, but... Tommy, we had a we had we did during leading up to New Year's Eve, we did have some books that came out. You want to talk about any books that came out this week? This yeah, past I, got, week? I got I got a couple. You know, maybe a, a book you guys might not think I talk about, but um, to start things out, Timeless Number One. This is, I mean, if you really look on the surface level, it's an advertisement. Marvel does a lot of advertisements these days in the form of comic books. This is no this is no different. Not it's not as egregious. As Star Wars Revelations that we talked about last week, but you know it's one, it's just a teaser. It's a big teaser. You know they kind of they they've done this before. I think I think they did one last year or maybe a little while ago. I don't know. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I didn't do my research on you know the lore of Timeless, but this one you know all I was reading it, all I could think about was like wow these characters would make really cool action figures. I mean Luke Cage in this book. Looks really cool. <laughs> I mean, he's got like he's got like a like like a huge fist. He kind of looks like Doom Fist from Overwatch. I know you're not you don't know that reference, but some people somebody out there probably will. And he that looks he just looks so cool. He's got like a like a wisdom like a kind of like a little long like goatee beard kind of a thing. That's pretty sick. Well, they're seeing the picture of it, right? Well, they are. I know, but you know, I you know they are. I guess that's true. It's a good point. <laughs> um, also, you know, Danny Rand, Moon Knight, that's, he looks pretty sick. Even Khonshu, you know, sort of a future Khonshu, that looks really cool. So, yeah, you know, this is kind of a cool, it's a cool book to look at. It's a cool visual book, you know, and it does do a good job of teasing the things coming up this year. Uh, but next, Power Rangers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one. Um, my mother <laughs> is not going to like me talking about this. Because she despises Power Rangers. But you have to know that I grew up with Power Rangers. Not the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but, you know, later iterations of them. And uh, my parents don't like Power Rangers because they had to watch it all the time. Over and over. Over and over again. And but, over you know, it's a, number, it's, a number, it's a number one. You know, I don't really read a lot of Turtles. I don't read any of the Power Rangers. But I figured I'd give it a shot. You loved the Power Rangers, man. I, I did. What. And to be honest, I still do. You know, <laughs> I really, I have no attachment to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I don't really like them, but uh, I do like the franchise. And uh, but this was kind of a cool. This was kind of cool. It's weird to see the Power Rangers written, you know, for more than a uh, younger audience, you know. So it's just, 
Yeah, and again, I I haven't read Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before, so to see some actually half competent dialogue in this book, it was a little jarring at first. But you know what? It was refreshing. Uh, and I really like the black and white. You know, the modern turtles books. I don't think I don't think are in black and white. Uh, they always they, you know, they go back to it from time to time always, but it's cool to see the black and white. It's cool. Yeah. It's a weird to see the Rangers, you know, these color coded people in black and white. <laughs> it's hard to tell them apart, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a cool little aspect. So, uh, yeah, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, TMNT, Timeless, both great books. We'll be talking about Duke in a little bit with the Mighty Mafu, uh, as well as other GI Joe titles. But, uh, coming up this week, uh, I am looking forward to nothing in DC Nothing. Um, nothing, because I only read like two titles from there anyway. But Marvel, we got some good ones. We got a new Spider-Man 2099, uh, Miguel O'Hara, number one coming out. That'll be pretty cool. Vengeance of Moon Knight, number one coming out. The continuation of Jed McKay's uh, Moon Knight run that just ended in December. That'll be pretty sweet. And uh, I think I think those are the standouts. You know, I think there's some more. You know, ASM comes out, and you know the gang war stuff continues. But to be honest, I haven't really kept up with most of the gang war stuff. I, I read Amazing Spider-Man. I read some of the tie-ins, but I just don't. I just don't read all the tie-ins because I just don't have the time for that. And to be honest, some of them just aren't that interesting to me. I, I like how you said that you don't have much DC. You know, in your in your reading. Uh, pile right now. We got you wearing your DC hooded sweatshirt like it's going out of style. Well, you know, I like the all, Flash. So. <laughs> yeah, I know the Flash is your guy, but just I'm not reading. I'm going to wear my DC shirt today, and then I'm going to shit all over him today. Well, <laughs> Nick, that's just how it works. That's how it works. I mean, listen, if I'm going to talk about this every week, I am not going to force myself to read titles that, just quite frankly, make me throw up. That's all and right. Yeah. That is that's not all of DC. You know, you give credit where credit is due, but that is some of DC. So. Cool. Well, hey, listen, everybody. We know we've had a couple fans. Shout out to uh, JD and, of course, Matt, uh, Scott, and the boys. And uh, we've had some email requests for the Mighty Mafu specifically to come out and talk about some G.I. Joe. So uh, we're going to bring in the Mighty Mafu to fill that request because we like to please the fans. And since we've had a couple of emails um, wanting to hear Mafu's take, we're going to get him in here. We'll be right back with the Mighty Mafu. All right. Here to talk with me, G.I. Joe, the Mighty Mafu. You know, I figured I I can't I could not go without talking about Duke, but I figured why why not bring in the expert to talk about Duke with me? Uh, so Good idea. first we're gonna I'm gonna give my take on Duke, then you're gonna give your take on Duke, and then we're gonna talk about uh, sort of the the GI Joe as a whole here. Uh, for me, Duke was probably one of the best titles that came out this week. It was the highlight. It was what I was looking forward to the most, and like everything else in the Energon universe, it didn't disappoint. Uh, as somebody who is not a G.I. Joe fan, has no real knowledge, prior knowledge, or interest in G.I. Joe. Yeah, that's something uh, that we might need to uh, fix. Yeah, well, ladies I, and gentlemen, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a G.I. Joe guy. You know, I never really gravitated or connected to the old '80s cartoon. Disgrace. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, but I wasn't just gonna shut this down, and I read it and. I really like how they did it. You know, they they introduced Duke in a way that I think was faithful to his old OG character, uh, while also sort of telling a new story that new fans who aren't familiar with the previous lore and stories and all that stuff can really, you know, understand, cling on to, and be able to follow in a way that, again, is faithful to the character, gets people introduced to the character, but also tells a new story. And that's what I really like here. And that's what I really like about all the Energon Universe stuff, especially in Transformers. Again, that's sort of the same thing. You know, not everybody watched Transformers. Not everybody knows about Transformers. So for them to sort of bring back these characters, re revive them, and introduce them all in ways that tell new stories for new fans but also are faithful to their original characters, I think is really cool. And uh, not easy to do. So it, there is some real talent on display here. But uh, I love to do. I'm really looking forward to Cobra Commander. What was your take? Oh, me too. Cobra Commander just sounds awesome. So my take, um, just like you said, it was awesome. Some, so some of my favorite things were when they introduced Mars Industries. And those of you who don't know, that's basically with like Destro's company. And they're employed with Cobra, so they make... Like the Hiss Tanks and the Cobra Claws and the Cobra Stingers, everything like that. And they also 
mention Destro, but they don't show like his full face, but you see kind of his outline mm-hmm. of it. And, and you know, that's one of those examples where it's like, you know, you might know Mars Industries if you're a prior G.I. Joe fan, but if you don't know G.I. Joe, you know, they don't make it seem like you have to know what it is. You know, it's one right. of those cool little Easter egg drop-ins. And another thing I want to point out, and maybe you're going to get to this, is sort of the action in the book. It's really cool. It's like it, it's written and drawn in a way where it's like you almost you see it, it's a different style of combat, you know, where rather than like big like kicks or punches that send people flying back and and like, you know, knock onto the ground and really these big visual combat moments. It, it's a little more smaller, a little more meticulous in that you really see like the hand movements as there's dodging punches or he's, you know, like raising the arms for like military hand to hand combat style, which you don't see in a lot of comics. Right. And I thought that was really cool and yeah. really well executed here. So, and then some more things I liked was when he, uh, so Duke, you know, he's still getting over like the, uh, death of his brother, which I can't blame him. <laughs> you can't play with him. Well, dude, you can't play with him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he got crushed by a star screen. That's he true. Did. That was that was a cool little tie-in too. And then you know he gets so he goes see this doctor, and she has plans. So if those of you who haven't seen the '80s cartoon, go watch uh, the episodes because they create. So Cobra creates this device that can literally teleport uh, Cobra like Cobra Troopers, to any little location. So that's a nice little nod that they did that. that where, they, was, where was that in the book? Uh, when Duke goes with the doctor to go, like, hey, I need you to go on this mission to Mars Industries and spy on it, basically. Oh, okay. It's kind of in the beginning. And so you think that's where it's going to leap? Is That's where you think that that's kind of what they're setting up? Yeah, and, like and that's where Cobra thing. wants the uh, device. Okay. Yeah, you know, so that they can conquer the world. Like that's Cobra's scheme is to they want world domination. So I can see that happening in Cobra Commander or in more issues of Duke. All right. Well, I I think you have a really good take there. You know, I think that's. Yeah, uh, I think Duke was really cool. I, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, it but just sucks that we have to wait till the end of the month to read a new issue. Yeah. Well, we help. We'll have Transformers. We'll have Cobra Commander. That'll yeah. be cool. Uh, but we had a request. Uh, people want to hear your take on the ongoing uh, Larry Hama, G.I. Joe stuff. Now, I personally, I read 301 to talk about it here, but I did not read 302. Uh, mostly just because, you know, I, again, I'm not a big G.I. Joe fan, and that, you know, the, the Larry Hama stuff is not set in the Energon universe. So for me, it's like, I don't really want to read it. So, right. But you, you're a G.I. Joe fan, so I yeah. think it would be cool to hear what you think about the Larry Hama stuff. So, so starting off with 301... I think that they should have just cleared up some of the stuff that because, you know, when I was starting reading it, I didn't know, like, why Wild Bill was flying a plane instead of a dragonfly. So that so, you know, they could have just make a brief summary of what's happening to the, you know, readers just jumping in on 301. Right. You didn't. Yeah, I get that. You know, you didn't really like how they kind of just jumped right back in instead of maybe sending things up again, you know, right. or, or recapping things for maybe people who did not read the stuff through IDW, which right. I understand. Which I haven't read yet, so. Right. And that's something, even though I'm a G.I. Joe guy, I'm not much for, like, the G.I. Joe comics, so, yes, blame me and sue me if you want, but <laughs> I promise you I'm going to read G.I. Joe, the IDW series. So Eventually, yep. Yeah, so eventually I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, well that well uh, that's good. Make a promise. Maybe we'll yeah. get you in for a Joe uh, like review segment. But yeah. uh, so, what did you like about it though? Like, what did you think? I like the well? action, you know, mm-hmm. because most of the characters I didn't know because you know IDW right. because you know they didn't clarify. But I like Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. I'm I'm happy that they kept Snake Eyes quiet in this issue, mm-hmm. except in three hundred two, which I'll get to soon. Um, then I. Didn't like why, you no know, Mindbender and Serpentor were like, okay, let's make this mutant bomb that'll basically turn everybody into cannibalist eating humans, basically, and 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 the mutants, basically, you know, like Ninja Turtles, kind of, you know how Ninja Turtles has all those weird 
characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's basically what Mind and uh, Mindbender and Serpenta wanted was yeah. basically a bunch of mutants, basically to take over the world without Cobra Commander. Right. Yep, yeah, I remember that part from the first. And, that's from the first issue, right? Yeah, that's from yeah, the, I remember the that. first yeah. issue. And yeah, you know, it was sad to see in the end a uh, character die. Mm -hmm. So that's sad, it but. Was. But all the the Joes made it off the island in time, so that's who. So that <laughs> so everybody must be happy now that that is out of the way. Yep. Well, what did you think about three hundred two? I thought that was good on most parts. So they did take place after the mutant bomb exploded on Cobra Island, and mm -hmm. everybody, you know, like all the Cobra troopers are now eating like all the rest of the humans that haven't really been mutated yet, so that's kind of red flags. Get your red flags here. Red flag, yeah. <laughs> and then, but, yeah, but I didn't like when Snake Eyes spoke at the end. Like, that's something that Snake Eyes never does. You know, Snake Eyes is a quiet person. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that they decided now all of a sudden to have him speak, but, you know... <laughs> It's Larry Hama. He can make up the the story if he wants to. <laughs> yep, that's true. Well, uh, I I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see for three o three to see uh, you know what you think about it and what uh, yeah you know what where things go again. I didn't I read three o one and you know I was kind of I was following some of the things you were saying because I remember just vividly from the first issue. But uh, three o two I did not read, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, Thank you for uh, coming on. We'll bring you back so when 303 fun. comes out to give your yeah, take on it. So, and, uh, and yeah. And then, you know, whenever Transformers number four comes out, I'll be reading that and Cobra Commander. So oh, yeah. stay We're, tuned. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys back in a bit with Dad for an outro. All right. That was a pretty good take by the, the mighty Mafu talking G.I. Joe. I hope that satisfied uh, for all the people's requests out there. We'll keep them on the G.I. Joe track for you, everybody. So thanks for, thanks for requesting. Matthew loves a chance to... Uh, to talk about it when he can. Um, well, let's. We, we talked about our guests coming up uh, January 6th, our future guests. Uh, time to continue our weekly lookout for Dan Jurgens. <laughs> weekly lookout. Look out for Here Dan. Here it is. Weekly lookout. Weekly lookout for Dan Jurgens. Where are you, Dan? Dan, come to our store. We we know you're in the Metro. Come check us out sometime. We, we promise we're going to make it a real fun event. You just had an awesome variant cover come out for predator wolverine mm -hmm. and uh, we'd love to have you sign that book maybe do a sign in the store the people love to see it dan you're an icon we love you we're going to continue to look out uh so uh one of these days you're going to have to to find us here in bloomington we're not hard to find 9919 lindale just just head on down the road i know it runs all the way all the way <laughs> north and south buddy we can get here we can get here we're calling we're, we're looking out for you we're, we're going to keep <laughs> looking out we're going to find you um so yeah so um have we had a response from him yet? I don't. I don't think so. You think we will after we do the weekly lookouts? Well, maybe I eventually. <laughs> you know, maybe it'll, maybe somebody will reach him. I don't maybe, know. Maybe someone will reach him and say, "Hey, man, these guys are asking about you. They keep looking for it, but he, he must be in camouflage like the Mafu was because we just can't find him. <laughs> he's wearing his camouflage. We, gear, yeah. we keep looking for him. and We can't find the guy. And then uh, he's, he's role playing John Cena. I know. Honestly, <laughs> who can blame him? We did have brief communications there for a minute, but uh, we couldn't get a time down. So we're just going to keep looking for him. Uh, there's something else we're going to talk about our our, our 2023 wrap up. Our favorite memories of 2023 at the store. We are one year old officially, January 20th. It has been a roller coaster ride, a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun things going on this year. My favorite event, of course, Bill Allen coming in. Uh, childhood. It was it was uh, to have him come in and sign uh, my bike, my GT Pro Performer. That was quite. Uh, Quite an ordeal, and of course, Kenneth Rockford, Dave Wheeler, who uh, when we started back with the comic card days, I tell you what, Dave was right there with us to start off. So Dave Wheeler, thank you for also being our very first guest at the store. Oh, yeah. When we opened the store, Dave Wheeler was right there, so shout out to to a good friend of ours, Dave Wheeler. We uh, uh, He's always been there to support us, and, and we would love to support uh, from the local community. Uh, Tommy, Tommy, what's your take? Uh, you know, a, a, a big standout for me was actually getting to interview Key Champagne, oh, yeah, which, right. uh, uh, well, wasn't that long ago, but you know, for me, we've known him for a long time. <coughs> we've been friends with him for a long time. We consider him family. We yeah. Can, yeah. We consider him family. And, you know, to interview him was actually really cool on this podcast. 
Uh, also, to have Tom uh, Tom Nguyen here in the store was really cool. He's another family friend. He knows the person that we consider family. And Tom is him, an anchor, just like Dave yep. Willard. Tom was also at the very first Comic Card to support us. And uh, Tom was also here signing autographs at the store with Keith when he did a signing. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, we've, we have so many f- people to thank uh, to where we are. Tom, Dave, all you guys. Oh, Brent Schoonover was here. Brent Schoonover Eric was Burnham, here. Another Eric good, Burnham. Man, we've had Burnham here twice. Brent Schoonover was nice enough to be here to help us kick off the store. Uh, Brent, we love another great local talent. Brent, thank you for everything. Uh, tell you what, we've just had a, a Kenneth Rockerford, of course, good friend, c- came in. Uh, Kenneth Rockefeller's always been there for us, and uh, as ours, we've seen his art. And uh, I'm going to plop this up on the screen. This is a full page from a commission that he did for a friend of ours. Check out this commission. Uh, unbelievable recover for Aquaman. Uh, can't remember the number off the top of my head, but boy, wow, what a what a re- recreation cover that Rockefeller knocked out of the park for our friend Jay. Uh, Man, good job, Ken. So, yeah, some great memories, 2020. And we're looking forward to 2024. Our first guest of 2024 is, of course, Jimmy Hart. And, uh, gosh, we'd love to have an Alice Dan Jerk. We're going to keep looking out for him. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're really trying, you know, we're, I'm not gonna, we're not going to say any names, but I'll just tell you that, you know, we're really trying to get some good people here to the store. For we're trying to line up a year. pretty good lineup, so stay tuned uh, on the website. Stay tuned for Facebook announcements and more of that. It's, but, uh, it's not as easy as some of you might think to get these people to come to the store. We've so, had plenty of people comment you know, on who they want us to us. get. <laughs> and uh, Some you know, of we have to lay the groundwork that there there is a budget. It's not there, an open there wallet. There is a budget. These people you know? do have appearance fees, but I'll tell you what, we are, we are really trying to get some great guests for this year. Aaron. We're going to keep it fun, everybody. Thank you for a great 2023. We're looking forward to spending 2024 with you guys. I hope everybody has a safe, happy, happy, healthy new year. I hope all your resolutions come true. And uh, we'll see you next week, everybody.